you to the blue area of the moon, an area that for some reason you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. All right, welcome to Comic Pals 2012 video. I'm Eric. I'm Dan. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at some of the comics that we picked for the previous article. Uh, we're going to start off with a top Marvel book that we picked. Yeah. Um, I picked uh, Uncanny X-Force. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, basically, that's, a, that's an incredible book. Uh, Rick Remender is pretty amazing in um, Uncanny X-Force. Um, the the best thing that he did was he had a really tight um, tight story where he he was setting stuff up in the beginning that doesn't pay off all the way till the end you know it's like like the ultimate um, the ultimate in payoffs you know there there is even um, a couple storylines where stuff doesn't pay off till the next storyline and um, I, I think I think the the most important thing that he did the 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 best thing that he did that really made me realized that he can do a good job is he focused on each character individually yeah um he actually made me care um about deadpool um you know he's just a stupid goofball character i never really care about him at all yeah and uh, he actually was able to make me care you know um the other the other thing is um that uh the the last the last storyline um, it's just incredible, and we'll we'll get to that when we get to story arcs. Is that is that last ever? Is that book done? Yeah. Well, um, uh, Rick Remender's run is done, mm -hmm. and uh, the new volume two uh, as part of Marvel now is completely different. No. Oh, okay. Um, it's it's. Uh, I'm not even sure what the focus is. It's probably about the Avengers, like every other Marvel novel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's really they've they've relaunched X Force, yeah. which is basic. So basically, you know, Chris Yost um had Cyclops start this um. This killing team, you know, back back way before Utopia and Schism and all that stuff, and it had Wolverine and it had X twenty three and a bunch of other people, and Domino, and that ended, and then um, basically Wolverine restarts it on his own without Cyclops or anyone else knowing. Yeah, um, and uh, it was nice that it was kind of in its own in the own corner of its universe. That's kind of why I, I hope that I can somehow convince you to, to give it a give it a look, even though you're not into um, the six one six mutants, but. Um, you know, it, it gave a lot to the Marvel Universe. Um, there's there's one huge um, scene in particular where this huge thing happens and it ends up having ramifications in um, Uncanny X-Men and so on, but you didn't have to read any of the other books to understand this one. Mm. And that was a good thing. That was one th really good thing it had going for it. Um, <clears throat> you, p you picked Hawkeye. Yeah, I'm all about the Hawkeye. Um, and uh, basically, you know, I, I think that you know, uh, the best thing you could say for Fraction is that um, I did not care at all about reading anything about Hawkeye. I don't care about the Avengers. I don't give a darn. You gave me that book, and I was like, holy crap, this book is amazing. Yeah, I, I think that the book that seals the deal for everybody has got to be Hawkeye number three, the one where he meets Cherry, and uh, he buys that car, and, like, you know, he's got the Hawkeye thing over his junk and all that, and the yeah. trick arrows. Like, it's a great, it's great. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, it, it, it showcases Fraction's, you know, sense of humor and his, his reverence. It has Aha's, uh, real, that's David Aha, the, the, the artist, uh, his great sense of, of motion and, and kinetics, like, uh, those arrows and the car chase. Like, there's a car chase in the comic book. Car chases don't happen in comic books. And, uh, you know, like, you know, I've, I've mentioned before, um... Reminds me a lot of sort of a, a, a tamer, less personal version of the stuff that Fraction did in uh, Casanova. I've only ever read Casanova Verita. I've got some of the, the first uh, first bits, but I haven't haven't read through that. But it reminds me uh, just stylistically of sort of the, the creativeness that he does with his comics because he doesn't he's not content with just you know normal panel layouts and normal action and normal things like that. He wants to get kind of weird. He wants to get kind of you know kind kind of funky. Like he has a guy. He does a lot of time shifting. He does a lot of he does a lot of creative things in that book, and it's a lot of fun to read. Yeah, I love the art style. I think I think the throwback really does a lot for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think I think the throwback is part of what makes me think of it as as kind of like an Archer like mm -hmm. like comic. Except of course he's a good guy and all yeah. that. And and um, I love I love his relationship with Kate. Yeah, Kate Bishop. Yeah, um, I think I think that works really well. Um, 
really works amazingly in issue number three. Yeah. Um, as as uh, the you you can kind of see. I'm actually kind of unsure of what Fraction's trying to do. You've read a little more, but mm-hmm. but but basically, he kind of seems to be kind of hinting at some some sexual tension, kind of, but not. But it doesn't seem like it's like it's meant to go anywhere or whatever. But 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 maybe she's just more disgusted that he would do all these things for a girl rather than any sexual tension at all. But I just love that. I love the brick joke with the you know him her asking him why you would ever want to organize your arrows, and then yeah, and then yeah. he's. He's shooting like he's shooting at cars, and he shoots like an arrow that's just like a net or something yeah. like that. You know, like yeah. stuff that doesn't do anything. So or boomerang arrows. Boomerang arrows yeah. is a great, great brick joke. You can't, you can't, you can't underestimate that, bro. Uh, yeah, the 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 Russian, the tracksuit yeah, mafia. Tracksuit mafia. Oh my oh. god, it's it's so amazing. It it just uh, as soon as I saw that, I was like, that reminds me of Brighton Beach. Like you know, coming up in like I think issue eight is uh, sort of the big reckoning of all of uh, Hawkeye's. Uh, indiscretions when it comes to women so there might be some resolution of that stuff with kate and also i, I guess he's supposed to be with uh spider woman or something Jessica yeah or yeah a lot of, a lot of people um so so you know you're a big proponent of just um well, treating happens, treating yeah. treating each arc yeah and, um, and by each writer uh, but each sorry each writer yeah. each writer as separate so uh, Bendis is done with Avengers, and now whatever Hickman does, who cares if he does things that's contrary to before? As long as it's true to the character, yeah. you know, given a little bit of character growth. Um, and I remember when Hawkeye uh, first came out, Fractions Hawkeye, a lot of people were saying, "Wait a minute, he's supposed to be with Spider Woman." Bendis is writing this huge thing where he's a Spider Woman, but it, you know, in number three, he's with this other girl. So, yeah, uh, of course, uh, a big reason why you say we should, you know, just worry about each author is that. You can't really account where stuff falls in the timeline, yeah, so yeah. so we'll see. However, um, although it was the subject of what critics say is a pretty dumb movie, uh, I, I would not want to get a superhero girlfriend pissed. No, yeah, yeah. So is it Kathy Griffin or whatever. Or no, no, it was Uma Thurman. Yeah. yeah, it was Uma Thurman. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. I'm wrapping my little uh, my Marlins right there. Yeah. I like it. All right. So so for. Uh, DC Comics, mm-hmm. you want Wonder Woman? I did, yeah. Um, it's kind of a, a weird pick uh, or for me to even have DC comic books that I like because I did not read anything DC before the New 52, and I decided to get So it. success. Yeah. Relaunch everything all the time. Yeah, all the time, every every couple of years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I guess what they got me to hold on to is one book. So, you know, that, or, and I guess I'm still pulling Batwoman, so that's a decent attach rate. You, you launch 52 books and you get two. Um, it's more than you were doing before. Yeah, it's <laughs> infinitely more. So, um, but yeah, Brian Azzarello and uh, Cliff Chang, um, they kind of went this way. I don't know if they've done it before. You know, I, I don't, again, I didn't read, I didn't read Run Wars Past. But they were like, hey, why don't we involve the Amazons with the Greek pantheon? You know, because why not, right? And and I love all that mythology stuff, you know, whether it's it's Greek, Nordic, you know, even the, 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 the Roman Catholic kind of um, Judeo-Christian type stuff. So, you know, you got, like, Hermes as a character and Apollo, and he's, you know, getting these, these gathering these women, and they turn into oracles for him, and then he, like, they burst into flames as they're, as they're predicting the future. Like, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of cool stuff. War is, like, this old guy. I mean, like, so you have a lot of the family drama already built in because, theoretically, most people understand who these characters are and, and what's going on with them. And uh, and so you're you're able to, to sort of shift, or well, he shifted sort of the, this thing with Diana, where now she's the daughter of Zeus and all this stuff. And so it's 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 a real neat take on it. And um, the storytelling is is great. And Chang's art, like you know, Diana doesn't look like she does in uh, what is it, Justice League, okay. where she looks like a pencil thin model. Like okay. she looks like she could kick your ass. And okay. she's an Amazon, you know. Yeah. And Zola is is you know everybody like I, all all Chang's interpretations of the gods are fantastic. So. I think that that book is very successful at what it's trying to do. I love I love the way he wrote Hades. Yeah. In that issue, um, is that <clears throat> Jamie Reed, candlely melty <clears throat> guy, and and also the the realm of Hades uh, that it's made up of dead people and yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, I think I think he's doing some pretty amazing stuff with that. And um, I know I know whenever you selected it for the pal, I was always pretty excited. Yeah. I I, I really. Um, the first time I was like, "What is this?" and "Who's this giant person?" and all this stuff, but but it's it's actually pretty incredible mm-hmm. what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I went with Batman. Yeah. Um, um, you know, and uh, Dan's not a huge 
huge bat family person at all um he did he did he did pick wonder woman and and uh i mean um, batwoman i'm sorry batwoman but uh in general not big batman but but uh Kapoor and snyder have been kicking it out of the park and dan did um really enjoy the issue that we selected for the pal the one where where batman's drugged uh, yeah. in the court of owls maze he's kind of wandering around going crazy he's spinning the comic book around yeah 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 i was a i was a huge fan of the fact that you're getting disoriented mm-hmm. just just like batman is you know um it was the closest that I got in 2012 to the way I felt with The Walking Dead, where I felt what the character was feeling. I felt almost as disoriented as Batman, and I'm just reading a comic book. Yeah, yeah. I think it was creative use of panels, um, uh, just a lot of the good metaphorical stuff that you really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's a lot of times uh, with with comic fans and the comic you know fandom, they, they get all into talking about the writers, and they forget about, you know, the art aspect of it. And that's should be at least half you know as much like if you're not like you can push the envelope with the with the with the the writing but you should also be pushing the envelope with the art you know like really work the medium make us turn the book upside down not in every book obviously but you know it disorients you it makes you feel like you're confused too like mess around with gutters do something interesting with it you know and and i I think um one of the most interesting things about it is so uh in order to be able to afford more DC books, I've, I've started reading a lot of them digitally because mm-hmm. um, if you wait a month later, they're a dollar off. Yeah. And so so for every three books um, that I read a month later, I can get another book that three I couldn't books. before. Yeah. Um, and like uh, giving them away. Yeah. So, so the thing is, um, when you're reading it digitally, you can't turn it upside down. You can, well, I guess, yeah, because you're reading it on your monitor. If you had a tablet, you could screen lock and turn the tablet upside down. I See, I didn't know about screen locking because every time I try to I try to read something like that, I'm, it just rewrites it. Every time, it just turns it back upside up. So I was like, okay. So, so but but also, you know, double-page spreads don't quite work as well. You know, um, with a regular tablet, you can read your single spreads. It looks just about, it's about 90% size. But, yeah. but um, stuff like that is a really good argument for physically owning the book. You know, stuff like that just becomes... Even see, even if I did lock the screen, that's taking me out of the fiction temporarily, you know. Um, and and I have to f- find that function, turn it on, turn the book around, turn it back off, or I guess at that point it doesn't matter. But yeah, but uh, that's good. That's a good argument for for continuing to read the books physically. Um, and uh, all right, next we'll be talking about our indie books. I'm Dan. <laughs> So for our for our uh, top indie book, yeah, we, we both won with Saga. Yeah, we both won with Saga. Yeah, BKV and uh, Fiona Staples. Uh, yeah, this this year, um, or in twenty twelve, you introduced me to uh, to Brian via um, Why the Last Man. Why the Last Man? Um, great book. Um, it's really has me guessing a lot about what he's gonna do with Saga. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he 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 really makes um, Yorick uh, wander. Pretty much for five years entirely before he meets um, Beth. Beth, yeah, Beth, yeah, the the true Beth. Yeah, the other Beth he meets a while before, but even everything in general seems to take a long time in in that book. He seems to be really about the slow burn. Yeah, um, but Saga seems to be at least up till now a little bit of a faster pace. Um, I was I was I was really afraid they were going to be on that planet for quite a while because uh, when that first issue comes and they're like, oh, it's just over the bridge, and then there's like a battle going on on the bridge. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it just, um, I, I, I picked up the book right around the time Scarlet was born. Yeah. And it's it, perfect and, timing, I guess. Yeah. It, it just really speaks to me as a parent. And, you know, I, I mentioned this in the, in the article, but, uh, because of comic book time, I'm kind of, you know, way past Marco and Alana now, but, but it's still pretty neat to, to read about that. And, and you don't, you know, um, because of comic books being really afraid of people not wanting to read them. They don't really age their characters, so you don't really we see too many parents in comics. It's true, yeah. Because um, otherwise, then you have this kid always the same age, like forever. But you know, I, I, like you were saying with why, you know, he allowed that story to unfold over five years. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing saying that Saga wouldn't have a time skip at some point, but uh, that's getting ahead of ourselves anyway. Well, I, I think I think that um, either way, it still works really well because you know people what they what they end up doing is like for example. Uh, you know, in the six one six X Men, yeah. Hope is born, and they need they can't wait for Hope to grow up. So uh, they contrive that she ends, she goes to the future, she grows to the future, she comes back. And now she's a teenager or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But but um, you know, they're just Peter Parker had to get you know his marriage 
divorce, you know, um, disappeared because the people were afraid. Oh my God, he's married, but I'm having a blast reading Saga. Um, and you're not even married, obviously. Well, not obviously to the readers, but, mm-hmm. but, but, but yeah. So you're not married, but you're enjoying it too. So, so I think that's a great proof. So, so, um, who's your favorite character? Oh, uh, I, I think I kind of like Marco a bunch because uh, he's just. I like that 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 sort of. Um, I don't know if you've ever read or seen any of like Roroni Kenshin, mm-hmm. but he's this this Ronin, you know, samurai without a master, and uh, he turns his sword around whenever he fights. He always hits people with the dull end, you know. It's this kind of pacifist thing, and I dug that about Marco too. That he's sort of forsaken war to uh, to be a family man and all this stuff, and so he he's kind of a, a cool character, and he's not he, he's he's not as as um, fragile as like Yorick where Yorick always had to be protected by like 355 or something like that so it's not like uh, BKV is just <coughs> recycling all his characters or anything like Marco you know he's clever he's funny he's got the little magic spell stuff you know and he's, he's he's kind of a funny guy so you know that and then just the fact that we have you know Prince Robot the fourth like that's hilarious yeah I think I think that the Prince Robot was one of the one of the things that kept me on the book yeah um, but I, I think it's an interesting point you bring up that, that Alana and Marco are both both strong characters. Yeah, you've got neither one seems to need to depend on the other. Uh, they were both soldiers. Yeah, so they're both they're both able to do what needs to be done, and um, I think I've really really come around to the will. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, I, at first he's just hey he's a bounty hunter that's been sent after the main characters. Mm-hmm. Um, but but uh, he's been getting increasingly more complex. Um, we found out that he had something with um, the was it the will the willow. I can't remember. But, just but the, it too. the kind of spider-looking spider, yeah, bounty yeah. hunter, um, which he, actually, yeah, my favorite character is Lion Cat. Yeah, Lion. Yeah, he has a he has a great Lion, Lion Cat. He's Lion. you know he he's he's willing to just blow every. I, I know I know you remarked that it was a kind of a cheesy moment, but but when he goes to, to the the sex planet. And you know he saves the underage. Well, he um, doesn't actually. He well, can't. He can't but, afford it. But he 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 tries to. Yeah. He does. He actually squeezes a dude's head until it explodes, mm-hmm. um, just to try and save this girl and and um, that and everything. It, it just. I think that's a great thing about about Brian K. Vaughn. He kind of makes more complex characters. Yeah. Um, and and even Marco, uh, we just found out. I'm pretty sure this issue was in 2012, but if not, it's the first one of 2013. We we finally see his his spurned uh, love yeah. that he left for for Alana, and I, I think the reveal that he had a wife before her was like, whoa! So this isn't just some you know innocent pair of people that are just. I think maybe they were engaged. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But but uh, but he does say, "Tell my wife" or something oh, like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think they were engaged, but he does say, "Tell my wife," and I think. I, you know, at first you're thinking, "Oh, look at these these poor guys are being hunted by the world, and they all they did was fall in love and be Romeo and Juliet." But, but there's there's more going on uh, under under the under the hood. And we do we should take a couple seconds to talk about um, Fiona Staples is fantastic work. She does both the art and the lettering, and I think that that um, one her lettering contributes a lot to it. Like the whole, it's, you know, supposed to be from Hazel's perspective. Yeah. Like she's the narrator, the cutest little narrator you've ever seen, Little Horns. And, uh, of course, um, just her lines are fantastic. Like, yeah. Marco and, and Alana are just beautifully realized in everything. And, and a lot of the background details, Isabel's, like, kind of gross, kind of cool looking. Like, everything is very well drawn. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's one of the two books right now that I'm, I'm still getting physical books because it's just so beautiful. I don't have an iPad with the retina display, so... So the only way to see the the book as beautifully as it is is to physically buy it, mm-hmm. um, and I think I think her artwork's incredible. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the the uh, top story arcs for yeah. Marvel. Yeah. Um, I went with Final Execution uh, for Un- Uncanny X Force. Okay. Um, I I found that. Uh, that that last arc, uh, which is basically they're they're going up against um, uh, all each person has like one adversary that happens to be in this group. That's it's, it, they've kind of reconstituted the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which uh, a, as in the Sinister Six is kind of just a generic name at this point for for bad guys who are in this case up against the uh, X Men. But um, what really hit home for me was the scene where uh, Wolverine and Doc are fighting and. 
and Dawkins basically blaming Wolverine for being an absent father, and they just get in this this really heated argument, and and you can kind of see like the pain, and and again, just like um, how Remender made me care about Deadpool, he actually made me care about Dawkins. Yeah. Um, I didn't I, I didn't really care too much about him when I came across his uh, short lived uh, ongoing series. Um, yeah, see, like the only Wolverine person I care about is X twenty three. Thanks to Marjorie Liu. Yeah, she does an incredible job. Uh, I was really sad to see that go. If, if we did, like, the uh, saddest moment of 2012, for me, it would have been the end of X-23. Yeah. Um, as I was looking back through my database, I saw that, that, that the last few issues were, were in 2012, and that was pretty sad. What's she on now? Like, um, She's on Astonishing oh, okay. X-Men. Yeah, there's, yeah. Too many, there's too many X-Books. Yeah, yeah, way too many. Yeah, Astonishing Avengers. And, <laughs> and they started mixing all the names yeah. together. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. So, um, so what'd you go with? I went with Spider Man, uh, Pichelli, uh on art and uh, Bendis on on uh, writing. And um, I'm surprised you did that because obviously, since they since they mixed the two uh, worlds, the yeah. two universe, they're, they're out of ideas. Yeah. So right. this this must have been a really sad five issues to know that they're finally out of ideas. That's what that's what they said back back in the day. They were like, you know, if we ever cross over the Ultimate and the and the real Marvel universe, um, that means we're officially out of ideas. But I'll tell you what, and, and I'll tell you why it worked out okay. It's because they got rid of Ultimate Peter Parker, you know, God, God rest his soul, you know, 1610, God rest his soul. <laughs> um, and they and they replaced him with Miles Morales. And so, like, you have this sort of, this great thing where Peter gets the weirdness of showing up in the Ultimate Universe and, know, and, and everybody's like, dude, you're dead. And Miles gets to sort of learn from Peter, but Peter also gets to, like, well, I guess Aunt May's not dead, right? No, no, but but Gwen, but Gwen Stacy is, and he gets to see Gwen. I don't think he gets to see Mary Jane. But, no, she um, kind of sees him from behind, like a pole, and starts crying. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Mary Jane in Ultimate is like hipster Mary Jane. It's kind of weird, but um, yeah, she was she was into Spider Man before it was cool. Um, but yeah, so I mean, like you know, on the on the on the downside, not a lot of miles. It's mostly focused on Peter. Uh, maybe Bendis missed writing for Peter or something. On the upside, um, Pacelli's pencils are amazing. I love Pacelli's work. Um, like she's so good with fashion. Like everybody looks like they're wearing real clothes and stuff. And uh, and I actually because they were trying to, to really focus on some of the the non Peter uh, cast because they wanted to make a clean break from all that. Uh, you know I haven't seen Ultimate Aunt May, Ultimate Gwen Stacy. This sounds like they're like super awesome. Right? <laughs> uh, or like you know Ultimate MJ. Like I haven't seen them in forever. So it was it was good to to, to sort of see that warm my heart. You know, Miles learned about great responsibility and great power and all that, and you know, it's it, it worked out better than I thought it was going to. Um, I think I think my favorite scenes were how people thought he was a uh, Peter Parker was a jerk for being dressed as Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like everyone he came across was like, dude, not cool. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, even Miles had to switch his costume because uh, people were like, that's really disrespectful. Because Peter died a hero in the, uh, in yeah. the Ultimate World, so. Yeah, it's pre- it's pretty cool. I I actually really um, like Spider Man, but um, because I didn't really have the ties to the six one six, it didn't really hit as hard for me as it as it did for you. Yeah, yeah. Like I I've, I've been reading like I I wasn't reading comic books for the longest time, and even then I was still reading Ultimate Spider Man. Like I've been reading Ultimate Spider Man since I was in high school, so just reading trades and stuff. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. All right, for the for the top story arc um, for for DC, I, I picked the Court of Owls, um, Batman. We kind of talked about that a bit. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm just gonna kind of um, let you talk about you 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 also picked um, Wonder Woman, um, Zola's yeah. pregnancy. Yeah, but um, since that's pretty much just this year's story, uh, I kind of already talked about it too. So I wanted to talk about my runner up. So it's just the uh, just one book, just the, the Swamp Thing annual. So um, you don't. I mean, you. I guess you read that a couple Swamp Thing issues for Comic Power, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, and normally, you know, I would be real bent out of shape about it not being Yannick Paquette on art. Um, but I really love Becky Cloonan, so um, I really, I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like they, they had this whole Rot World Animal Man crossover thing going, where they were like fighting the Rot, and it was like all brutal. And I think like Abby Arcana just died, or I don't know. But they took a they took for the annual they took a time some time and they and they kind of did this uh, this love story this story of when um, Alec and um, Abby first met in you know wherever it is in Europe 
and uh, conveniently, you know, there's an amnesia thing at the end, so neither of them remember it. But you know, there's this there's this great panel, and I hope that you've all like clicked through it. You know, like it's it's right up there in the background where you know when they first meet and they shake hands, and you see like sort of the plant structure through his body and the the rot structure through her body, and it's just this it's this you know meet cute story, and uh, I'm a sucker for it. Snyder did a good job, and and Becky Cloonan just really like she's got this almost cartoony but real kind of almost disney-ish mm-hmm. look to to her art and so like but she can also do like the real sexy stuff like uh like in conan she did that first arc in conan um but this was just a real sweet story and after a year of people's heads turning around backwards and flies flying everybody's mouth um i really enjoyed this this little story of sort of plant life and life in general in this weird uh this weird country where uh, where Alec and the Green uh, became intertwined with Abby and the Rock. I, I, I think it's, it's interesting you mentioned it has a Disney style because when I was reading it, I thought it was kind of anime-like. Mm-hmm. But but obviously, anime comes from, you know, Osama Tezuku, who, who was copying Disney. He was copying yeah, classic Disney. Of, yeah. So so I, I think that uh, it works really well, and I'll, um, I'll definitely make sure um, to to link back to the to the page. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, you you got to see some of our art with uh, that Batman uh, issue zero, or was it? Was no, it no, it was it was right after um, right after Court of Owl, Owls. Yeah, it was a Harper Row issue. I think it was issue eight. Yeah, and they were they were just um, basically she she was kind of force gumping it through yeah. through Batman's world. <laughs> so <clears throat> happen to be lucky everywhere. <clears throat> yeah, so so she you know we see her like momentarily um, right after the issue that you read mm-hmm. uh, when Batman escapes from the Court of Owls. And um, she's basically um, with a car battery and, and some k- jumper cables. She she um, re- restarts his heart or whatever. Even though medically that's not actually how it works. Um, and he kind of says, "I thought I told you to leave me alone." And he just leaves. And we're like, "Who the heck was that?" And and she was also in the first issue, but no one knew who the heck she was right. at the time either, because you know it's the new fifty two. She could be anybody. She could be Vicky Vale or whatever. So. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge sucker for Clunan's art. Like, yeah. if it, if it's got Clunan on it, I'll buy it. So. Yeah, yeah. And and she does a good job adapting herself to the style as necessary because I didn't feel that the um, arc that she did for Batman was like super Disney or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and even that, I mean, like some there were, there were some moments in there that were reminiscent of the Paquette work yeah. in uh, an earlier Swamp Thing. So she she is able to to adopt the visual style that that uh, the book is is going for, and I dig that. And I dug that arc. Right. Arc. <laughs> All right, next next we'll be talking about uh, the best creator owned, which in the, in for us happens to be Image. Yeah. All right, so just like last time, um, you know, I, I I think for the top story arc for creator owned, we both picked Saga. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the power of Brian K. Vaughn. I hear I hear that book is pretty good. Yeah. So so instead, we're we're just going to talk about some of our runners up. Yeah. So um, I got into the Manhattan Projects um, thanks to Dan. Um, like uh, getting me into Fantastic Four. Yeah, that's all that Hickman stuff. Um, and then Dan also shared with me Shield, which is one of the pals, one of my uh, favorite pals that Dan's ever picked. Mm-hmm. And then um, Daniel told me, uh, was it Red Wings that you read? Yeah, Red Wings. That was that was really good. So I said, all right, he's doing creator a creator owned ongoing. I'll check it out. It's the same. It's the same team, right? It's, it's Nick Patara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's and in fact, Red Wings. Yeah, in fact, um, Nick uh, Patara recently uh, followed me on Twitter. And so I was reading his description, and um, he's actually a co-creator yeah. uh, of the Manhattan Project. So yeah. I thought he was just the artist. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff I could say about the Manhattan Projects, but I just really love this um, arc, uh, which is not really an arc, but basically the the scientist um, helmet who's yeah. who's there with Von Braun and just suffers at Von Braun's hand at every turn. Um, and it's just – it's 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 pretty ridiculous. It's pretty um, – Sad and and I'm not really one to go in for that stuff, but but just the way that he just gets rebuffed at every corner doesn't matter if it's Nazis, Soviets, aliens. He's always having you know stuff happen to him that's that just really sucks. I will say like and, and part of it's probably because of how much you love Helmut, but like uh, in this most recent issue, which is you know 2013, it's outside of the purview of this video. But um, there's that scene at the end where they're sort of showing everybody who survived the. Uh, the, the Masonic attack and you know Helmut's still there and I was like alright way to go dude yeah 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 you made it cause I mean it was uncertain it was uncertain whether or not he made it so yeah cause they didn't they didn't bring him through the portal so yeah yeah and he was I mean he was being a death Buddhist so yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so you want to talk about Alabaster Wolves? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, this is uh, Caitlin Kiernan, and uh, I forget exactly the artist's name. I'm going to see Steve Lieber. Um, and apparently uh, this this character, like Dancy Flammarion or something like that, I, I can't remember the last name, but, but Dancy is a, apparently um, from Kiernan's, like, novel work like her her fiction work and so she took the character and she made this uh this little mini arc um comic book it's about six issues it's real compressed but it has a lot of things that i that i that i feel are rare and that i like to see like you know it takes place in the south uh it stars actually pretty much except for i think the the final antagonist it's like an all-female cast you know because it's dancy and this other werewolf and a crow you know um and like I was talking about before with uh, Wonder Woman, it's got this sort of real Judeo-Christian overtones. You know, like she's kind of, um, she is a, an instrument of God meant to kill demons and, and werewolves and things like that. And she's got this guardian angel. And so it's, it's, it's got a, a lot of that, that neatness to it that, that I dig because it's just something you don't see. You don't see it ever. Yeah, I think, I think the neatest thing was just from the title, I never wanted to read it. It sounded like some... Like, really girly comic? Yeah, it sounds like a Twilight kind of thing. Yeah, but but from your description, it sounds like something I want to check out. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it, it, it's... she She's not, like, a big buff character, you know. Uh, she's not the brightest character either. Um, she just kind of goes through it, and she has this, this unwavering sense of, of good. And, you know, it's 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 brutal, and it's violent, and it's it's kind of fun. And, uh, and I dug it. Cool, cool. So I don't remember uh, where I got the inspiration for the topic of best comic I just discovered. I um, bet it's probably Giant Bomb. It could be. It could be Giant Bomb's best, uh, you no. know, t- uh, N-1. N-1. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Game. Game of N, yeah. But it could be that. It could be, you know, um, the Comics Alliance um, um, reviews that you sent me. They might have done something like that. Yeah. Um, but for, especially for me, um, I, there's a lot of stuff that I don't get to – read when it comes out or experience when it comes out yeah, um, well you have so much time and you have so much money yeah yeah so so sometimes you just get to it later um in this case it worked out in my favor because um my choice which is irredeemable and incorruptible um i got to read it as a trade yeah um uh, and um it's mark wade um mm-hmm. you know you you picked mark wade's uh, daredevil as one of your runners up for marvel uh wade's amazing he's a good guy um and uh, Irredeemable um, is just had me going at every turn. Or I, if I was reading it monthly, I would have just gotten mad at him for making me wait. Yeah. You know? Like, it's just every at every turn, you're like, no, 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 what's going on? And and uh, when, I, when I got a chance to interview Wade at uh, Baltimore Comic Con, yeah. um, you know, I told him, I said, one of the things this, your book really reminds me of is Jurassic Park. Because a lot of it is based on deception. Yeah. You know, a lot of it is based on people lying to each other. And, and for example, um, I can't remember her, her name, but I think it was Bet who sleeps with him. Bet Noir. Um, she knows how to kill him. She knows about the, the, the candle. candle wax. She could have stopped him before a lot of people died, but to do so would have been admitting that she slept with him, which would have hurt, um, um, Gilgamesh. 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 Um, so, which is kind of like a, like a, um, Hawkman type of, uh, uh, archetype, um, the books, uh, in case you didn't have a chance to read the, the write-ups that we did, um, basically, what if Superman was in the real world? Um, what if he was raised by real parents who were actually afraid of children who had superpowers? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what if what if he had some problems? Yeah, yeah. What if, what if you know, when he told Lois Lane she couldn't keep a secret, but instead she went go- to go blab to everybody? You know, it's... Uh, uh, it, it leads to some really amazing stuff. Right, right, right. And it's not, you know, like, there's a tendency when you hear that kind of premise to be like, oh, like, it's Watchmen. No, no. Yeah. It's not It's not like that at all. Yeah, where, whereas Alan Moore, um, he's he's more, see, Alan Moore is more of, okay, what if it was a real, real, real world yeah. where there's no superheroes other than Dr. Manhattan? Right. Um, it's just people playing dress up. But what if, what if it was a world with everyone was Batman? Yeah. Um, only, you know, not as technological. Right, right, right. right. Whereas, whereas um, Incorruptible is more like, take the DC or the Marvel Universe and then transplant it into the real world where people are not just going to take for granted what heroes do, you know? Um, kind of, Marvel kind of tried to do that with Civil War. Yeah. Um, um, but I, I think, you know, for Marvel's, in Marvel's best interest, 
for the long term is just let that let it be a fantasy world where people can dress up and have fun and and, and let let these indie creators that have space to do whatever they want be it Watchmen be it uh, Irredeemable Incorruptible let them have a chance to and what do you think of the uh, what do you think of the epilogue I mean I don't know if you want to get into sort of the ending of, of uh, Irredeemable but uh... okay spoilers all right if if uh, if you don't want to hear about it uh, each of these segments we've been doing has been taking five to seven minutes just jump ahead a bit or um, take a look for the next title card but um, I thought it was a sweet ending yeah uh, where where he ends up um, so um, he wasn't exactly like even though they call him the Pluton- Plutonian he didn't come from another planet he was this weird mystical being it's really hard to get into it but basically he's some kind of mental thing so he ends up being the the inspiration for for Schuster yeah and um, I can't remember the other guy Siegel Siegel, Siegel yeah. and Schuster to create Superman and um, um, Mark actually told me off um, off mic when I was done interviewing him that the idea came to him while Grant Morrison and he were having a discussion while Grant Morrison was writing All Star Superman yeah um, so yeah I, th- I thought it was great I thought it was it was a little cornball-y yeah. you know especially after all the high drama of the last few um, the la- well the whole 50 something no actually 25 issues right it was like 25 was it 50 no 32 35 35 issues the whole 35 issues um but no, I liked it. I thought it was good. That was good. And uh, Incorruptible was hilarious. Yeah. I, I I just loved. It was funny because, and I mentioned this in the write up. So he's dating this underage girl named Jailbait. Jailbait. And and um, so with this particular character, you know, Mark Wade is kind of making an argument of the reason why we have underage laws is because people don't have maturity, and you can kind of see that where Jailbait refuses to understand why. Uh, max damage won't be with her yeah you know i think i think that my favorite uh joke and i can't believe that that was not something that was mentioned there like hate crime like that was the best like she's a good guy yeah my name is hate crime and because i hate crime yeah. and it's like i don't know it's, it's hilarious yeah i i it's full of, it's full of amazing jokes that's why i said in the write-up you have to pair them together yeah. one is the serious drama one is the hilarious stuff i i mean i, I don't know that i go hilarious well dark dark humor dark yeah, humor yeah. hilariously in a dark way it's yeah. really dark humor like it's not like too funny it's no, just no. it's yeah. just it's less self-serious yeah. not that a redeemable has a seriousness problem but it's less like <sighs> yeah yeah yeah, it's it's kind of like uh, you know uh, we both played The Walking Dead this year, yep. and one of the things that a lot of people talked about was that it was good that there was a month in between each episode because yeah. it was so heavy. You needed some time to decompression. So so I could see while these were coming out monthly, and for me, what I did was when Dan gave me the trades, I go back and forth. Yeah. It was nice to just take a break, and and there is some kind of serious stuff happening, like the the even though it's kind of a cliche, the drunk cop and all that stuff, yeah. but. But in general, it's it's really funny. Come, and, you know, and Irredeemable is a lot more serious, but not that it doesn't have funny moments either. Yeah. Um, so, um, what'd you go with? What category? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I was like, I can't even remember what category we're on. Um, I didn't do, uh, unfortunately, I didn't do a lot of old comic reading this year. I mostly, like, it was a struggle for me to actually get to even my, uh, my comics from this year a lot of the time on time. So, um, but my comic shop had a sale at one point, and I ended up reading uh, Naoki Urasawa's Monster. Which, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, hey, how about if the right thing to do didn't lead to the right outcome? You know, this uh, this doctor, he is he could do the career say the career for, you know, advancing surgery of the mayor of Dusseldorf where he can try and save these two orphans whose parents just got murdered and he saves the orphans. But it turns out that that the boy is a, is a serial killer. He's the one who probably killed his parents like. And so, um, I only read the first book, so I didn't, like, go through the whole thing, but I thought it was kind of neat, and Urasawa, um, is a pretty respected mangaka, and, and his, his work is, his work is well drawn, and it's, it's decently well written, and, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. It was a nice little sort of, uh, mystery, uh, mystery book, you know? I, I think it'd be interesting to see, it, it kind of sounds, uh, this is oversimplification, but it kind of sounds like Dexter in a way. A little bit, yeah. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see how the, the Japanese cultural values um, lay over it. You know, uh, I mentioned in um, my write-up that one of the runners-up I had was Death Note that yeah. Dan lent to me. Yeah. And um, it's a great, great book that had a lot of good um, interplay between the characters, but also very, very Japanese. Yeah. Like, like this is this is a, a, a manga that I'm... Sub- well, it only came over now because of all manga comes out in the U.S. now. It's not like the old days where they only picked the stuff that would really resonate with Americans because there were definitely a few points in there where I was like, uh, an American would not do that, you know? 
um, um, the 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 cop honor the cop's honor in in you know not killing someone who threatened his daughter. Liam Neeson would never stand for that. No, no, oh, he's not an American, but yeah, um, but yeah, but he's in American movies. Usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, next, we're gonna just wrap it up with the biggest surprise yeah. of 2012. All right, so um, for me, the biggest surprise of 2012 was Avengers X Men Consequences. Okay, was actually good. Yeah. Um, you you've been watching the videos that I was putting up on YouTube. Um, yeah. And again, not a big fan of um, of, of X Men from Six One Six, but did it did any of it sound compelling? I mean, and it's okay if you say no. <laughs> it, it, it's not really my bag, but but it it feels like um, it feels like saying, you know what, we kind of we kind of dropped the ball a little bit with Civil War. Let's try this again and let's see if we can get this right a little bit more. And and it sounds like they did a little bit better with it. Um, and I'm intrigued by having Cyclops be. <coughs> This sort of uh, Magneto proxy kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think I think that uh, part of what made a huge surprise is that it was a follow up book to an event. Yeah, and um, pretty much universally, everyone hates the follow up book to Fear itself. Um, so there was no reason why this should be any good. It seems like a money grab, um, but I I had a feeling that they were on the right track when um, the artists were actually drawing Cyclops skinny. You know, his nickname's always been slim. Yeah. But it seems like in the last few years he's been on roids, uh, just as Wolverine has also become very tall, even though he's a runt. Yeah. And so I felt like they were doing the right thing there. And, and, it, and his... also prison food is not going to... Yeah. Like, you're not going to keep the bowl. Though. Well, yeah. And, and what I thought was that they, they did a pretty good job of kind of... He went from being suicidal to deciding, no, I have to stand up. And, and so I thought that was good a good turn. I, I yeah. wasn't sure where they were going to take it when it started. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the stupid box over his head is kind of funny, so. Did that jump cut surprise you? I'm surprised. We ran out of batteries. All right, so, so, uh, Dan, your, your biggest surprise? Hawkeye number three? Bro, yeah. I mean, who, and and we talked about this a little bit before, but who would ever have thought that the best book coming out of Marvel would be about Clint Barton, like, and Kate Bishop, because they're the Hawk, they're the Hawk guys. And, uh, I mean, whether it's, it's. The ridiculousness of you know the panel with the uh, the Hawkeye mask over or Hawkeye's junk or you know that that con- snowy conversation on the roof of the building where he's like Hawkeye yeah like the guy from Mash yeah Hawkeye <laughs> and it's 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 just it's great like it, it, it's it's so not what you think should be coming out of Marvel you know like it's just not your typical book and it's a lot of fun because of it. And I think it's going to see a lot of attention come, like, Eisner time and stuff like that. Like, it's going to be taking the t- some attention away from Daredevil, but uh, it's going to be it's going to be exciting. We um, I'm not I'm not sure whether or not we talked about this because we we ended up having some technical difficulties earlier. And, and part of what we were talking about got erased. But um, AHA's art. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it's it's I don't know. I, I'm not real equipped to to. to have the, the right vocabulary for it but it's just it's it's so simple and it's not it's not it's not real flashy it's not real like bulging muscles there's no pouches you know like it's not it's not like um no porn model references no porn model references it's all like just just track suits bro and like just chill jeans and and like shirts and it, it's it's just this this like you know, the dog is cute. Like everything about it is just great. Like, and it has it has a real throwback sensibility. I don't know if it's late Silver Age, early Bronze Age, but it just between the colors, the panels, and but then, uh, but then it has these panels that that are, would only come out today, like panels that are you know um, entirely silhouetted, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. so it's it's a great like a fusion of the old and the new. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a couple great. Um great little little segments you know like uh I, I wanted to put one in on the post that i didn't wear like he's throwing like a card and it's got this great sort of um sort of uh, motion to it and there's other good ones where like um i think it's it's sh- trying to show how fast something is happening and it has like kate mouthing like one letter at a time which he's saying to, to clint you know like it, it's a real creative <coughs> book and and you know it's it, it sounds like it's just like hey like bros just be bros and hang out and be broy. But it's not. It's just it's 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 lots of fun. And actually, if you uh, if you check out Matt Fraction's Tumblr, 
whenever he puts out a new book, he usually does kind of a, a, a brief commentary of, uh, of all the stuff, uh, each page, page by page, about the things going on in the book. That's, that's pretty amazing. I, I, I think, I think um, the biggest surprise for me related to Hawkeye is how much has taken off. Yeah. Like, the internet has just become, like, forget kittens, it's Hawkeye now. Yeah. Like, replacing female poses in the comics with Hawkeye. Um, just Hawkeye pictures of nudity everywhere. Just people, it's just insane. Like, Hawkeye's taken over the internet. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, for a pretty fringy, like, nobody cares character. Like, dude doesn't have powers. He's just he's just a guy. And, and I think that, that, that that's really the appeal of it. You know, like... It strips away the cape. It strips away the melodrama. You know, like he still is able to interact with with supervillains. Well, not supervillains, but like you know, organized crime yeah. type types. Not just even just the tracksuit guys, like Kingpin and you know, Madame Hydra and stuff like that. But like, you know, but at the end of the day, it's him and this building and his <coughs> and his neighbors and him just trying to be a good guy. I, I think I think he almost fits in better in this book than he does in Avengers. I mean, uh, if you just take a look at both. Um, SNL and um, Robot and Robot Chicken made the exact same joke about how he's just a regular dude with arrows in a team of superheroes, and I think sometimes it can be a little hard to suspend your disbelief with that. So I think he, that's why he works so well in this book. He's basically he's kind of they've taken the fact that he's a bow and arrow guy and said, "Hey, why don't we make him Robin Hood?" Yeah, and I think it works really well. You know, I kind of want to go back and see who wrote the uh, the Avenging Spider Man where he teams up with uh, with Hawkeye. Because it had an irreverent tone to it, but it, it probably was just another writer who's like, "Yeah, this Hawkeye stuff is pretty silly, isn't it?" Like, uh, I don't know if you remember that book. Do you? Did you read it? Did you read any Avenging? I, I've only read a couple. I, I read the one that you picked for the Pal, and I read a, a couple others, um, but I don't think I came across that one. I'll, I'll definitely have to seek it out. Yeah, yeah. If I maybe I'll, I'll go through my uh, backlog and I'll, I'll uh, or not backlog my long boxes and see if I can find it. All right. Well, um, just get, guessing based on the. The timestamps when I was uh, doing each segment looks like you've been with us for at least half an hour. Yeah. So uh, so thanks for spending the time with us. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm surprised. I mean, I'm Dan, <laughs> and uh, and I'm Eric, and and I hope you come back to Comic Pow and check out some of the video reviews we're doing. Um, if we get a chance um, this year, I definitely want to do some more pals with Dan. I had a really good time with that, and and we had to stop around the time that that my daughter was born and. Um, I really miss it. I really do. I I, I really enjoy um, the the insight Dan would come up with the books and and, and vice versa and just those type of things and and just the discovery. You yeah. know, uh, one of Dan's runners up on here that we didn't talk about was um, Conan. Mm -hmm. Never, that that could almost be my biggest surprise of the year. You know, that there could be a good Conan book. That's something right. that I would never right. I would never think about. But but Bucky Cloonan's art is perfect on yeah. that book. Yeah, and Brian Wood uh, on 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 writing i was gonna say pencils i mean <laughs> uh, on writing yeah on typewriter um but yeah that that's that's really great so so thanks for sticking with us and we'll, we'll see you in the rest of 2013 Pow. <laughs>